Hey there friends! We are back with another lesson for you. Today we're going to be doing monsters! And so why not take something that kids are so scared of and turn it into something fun and silly, right? So I don't know how many of you parents have kiddos that are terrified of monsters. I have one at home that kind of looks like a little monster, but she's a puggy. Anyway, um, we are gonna take the scare out of monster, right? And we're gonna turn it into silly. So we're gonna do a directed drawing, I draw, you draw. And I want you to remind your kiddos that mine is gonna look different than theirs because they are their own special artist. Um, I am gonna use a big old thick marker today. They could use a crayon or an oil pastel, anything like that. Um, or of course a big marker as well. They probably want to start with pencil just in case there's any oopsies. And then I'm going to be using some of the watercolor paints that we made in a previous video. Uh, the way I made these was I put a little bit of water in the bottom of a cup and then I took some markers that were kind of dried out, didn't work very good anymore and stuck them upside down right in the water. And it just creates your own liquid watercolor paint and saves lots of money. Of course, you could paint with temperas or acrylics. You could do this on canvas or heavy, thick paper, um, or you could just color. You don't have to paint, right? So we use what we have at home to create art, and art is just a fun way to express ourselves and to get some feelings out on paper. So the first thing that we're going to start with is a big frowny face curve. So I am going to draw a big frowny face curve just like this and this is a perfect project for little ones because they can follow along with me and do the same thing so big frowny face curve then we are going to do a horizontal line all the way across and notice that it extends a little further than the frowny face next we're going to make the bottom part of the jaw or the mouth just like that. So it's a smiley face curve. Now from here, we are going, oh, you know what? Let's do the body. So diagonal, diagonal. And remember, this is super simple. Your kiddos could totally do more than this, okay? Then we're gonna go horizontal, or excuse me, diagonal, diagonal 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 and then watch this we're going to do diagonal diagonal and then we're going to connect with some more diagonals or they kind of look like a really lazy w maybe so diagonal 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 and connect now Maybe your little monster has a furry outfit on, or it has polka dots, it has stripes, it has zigzags. You could have so much fun with this part. So I might do some curves, just like that. And then I am going to give my monster three eyes. Boop. Better to see you with, my dear. So we have three big eyes. And then how about some big pupils? Inside the big pupils, you could add some shines. And then they could color them in with their black, whatever they're using, crayon marker, color pencil, oil pastel. But remember, they're starting with pencil first. That way, if there's any oopsies, there's no tears. We don't want tears. Then we need, oh, I guess they could be like ears or horns, whatever you want them to be. And how about some teeth? Just to top it off, we got some teeth. And I think I'm going to add two little nostrils. All right. So now we have a super silly, easy peasy monster for the little ones. This would be a great project for, oh, I don't know, 
four, five, six, definitely could handle it. Possibly even three year old. Um, and then think about, okay, what do we want in the background? Do we want some polka dots? When my sister was little, she loved polka dots. It was polka dot everything. Now, if you are letting them paint, you are going to be a wise parent and put down something on the table so they don't accidentally paint something they're not supposed to. You'll need some different size brushes. Um, I like to have a small, medium, and large. So I like to have, and it's not huge when I say large, but small, medium, and large, okay? And you'll want napkins for drying brushes. And then of course I have my watercolors. Unless you have something else, you might have a watercolor tray and then you just need a cup of water and brushes or you might have acrylics or tempras. And remember, there is no wrong way to paint our silly little monster. And you know what, I think I'm gonna start with my polka dots first. So I might do some orange, a couple orange polka dots, or actually I might do them all orange. And when you're painting with watercolors, if I paint one area and then say I was going to paint the background right next to this, the colors could like bleed together, okay? Um, and then your kiddo is going to get frustrated if that happens. Oop, and if we have oopsies, like I guess I flung some paint there, we can just take our napkin, wrap our finger up, and then dab our paper and try to get that off. Okay. So get some more orange. We don't want too much paint on our brush or we'll have drippies. I love all these little words I've made up over time. I've been teaching art for 14 years. And if you didn't guess it, I do teach elementary. But I have adult paint classes as well. And I love them because it's a nice change of pace. Okay. So we got all those painted. Now we're just going to let those dry a little bit, move to a different space so that way we don't accidentally blend colors. So I think I'm going to paint my monster and I think my monster is going to be blue. Our monster needs a name. Maybe Mervin. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Mervin the monster. Okay. And so we'll paint our little monster all in. You could even make up a story about your monster, like where does it live? A lot of kids for some reason think there's a monster in their closet or under their bed. So maybe this silly monster, silly, funny, happy monster lives under their bed or in their closet. And in turn, keeps the naughty, mean monsters away. There aren't any monsters. Just remember that, there's no monsters. Okay, so we got that part painted and then we gotta do the underside of the mouth. So follow the straight line. We're gonna go back and forth, back and forth. This is watercolor paper that I'm using. I will say, um, if you're wanting to paint on your paper, the thicker the better. The more pounds your paper has, the more liquid it will hold. There we go. And then the little arms are also needing to be painted. Now the reason why I have a nice thick bold line is because the smaller your artist, the more likely it is that they might get out of the lines, right? So if you give them a nice thick line to start with, even if they get out of the lines, we're, st woo, we're still going to know what it is that we're painting. We still know it's a silly monster, okay? 
Oh, his ears. I guess his ears should match probably. Paint those in. Here we go. And if you put another layer of paint on, it's going to make your colors look darker and more bold, just in case you wanted your colors to be more vibrant, you can always just put another layer of paint on, right? Okay, so we got the whole body of the monster painted. I'm going to clean my brush because every time I switch colors, I have to clean, clean my brush. Now, I need to think what area do I want to paint? I think I'm going to paint our little monster shirt next. So I'm going to get some red on my brush. And maybe some yellow. Now, I accidentally used laser lemon when I made this yellow, so holy cow, it is super bright. There we go. It's like glowing up there. <laughs> That's okay. And the green is really, really light. I don't think I used, or I think maybe my markers were too dried out on the green. And then, oh, I don't know, maybe some purple. Do some purple in here. Now you have to be careful doing these colors side by side. It's like I was saying earlier, if they cross into each other, they're going to bleed a little bit and then your kiddo might go into freak out mode. But sometimes it's cool when that happens. I don't know if you can see on the screen, but my purple bled right there into the green and my yellow bled into the green. And so when it has a cool effect like that, we call it happy accidents, right? Okay, now I just need a background color. Hmm, I have black, but I don't know if I want black. I was kind of thinking green might be cool. Okay, so when I do my background, you could use a bigger brush, but I'm trying to get around all of these polka dots, right? So. If I use a bigger brush, I might accidentally paint my polka dots. So if you don't want that to happen, maybe stick with the medium brush for filling in the background. Anytime we're painting a small area, we use a small brush. Medium brush for a medium size area and then a big brush for a big area. Oh no, don't get on my teeth. I think I'm going to make those teeth that laser lemon color. There we go. So, oop, got some drippies. See, your paper will be flat, so you won't have drippies like I do. There we go. And then really, it's like a sweeping motion. Sweep, 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 sweep. Just like that, just sweeping that paint on. We're not smushing our brush, we're just sweeping it back and forth, back and forth. If you smush the brush, you might ruin the bristles. So think about that as you're painting. So I'm trying to remember as a kid if I thought there were monsters under my bed and I really don't remember. So it must not have been a thought in my head or I must have got over it, which is good. There we go. My daughter, ever since she was little, was obsessed with Bigfoot. And she swore Bigfoot was out there. And my mom lives in the country. And so she swore Bigfoot was in the backyard at my mom's house and would always have the hardest time falling asleep over there for the longest time. Now 
She probably didn't even think twice about it, but so funny. That was her obsession. That and the Titanic. She loved the Titanic. Okay. There. So of course, if I want that green to be more bold, um, I could go back and put a second coat on. But as you paint, the more liquid you put on your surface, so the more liquid we put on our painting, the more, um, I'm gonna try this black, kind of go over this green right here. The more liquid we put on our painting, on our paper, the, the it might start to kind of fall apart on you if it's not a good thick paper. So you might think about that and not put too many layers of paint on there because you don't want your paper to fall apart. Okay, then how about some laser lemon teeth? Right now I'm just sort of dabbing his teeth and then I'll go back and fill it in better. This area might be wise to use that baby brush so we make sure we stay in the lines. Slow and steady. Okay, so there, my friends, is my silly monster. And now you need to create a story for this monster. What's its name? Where does it live? What is its power maybe? How does it help you? Um, think about interesting stories you could tell about this monster and you could either write them out on paper and this could be like the cover of your book or you could act it out on video and you could show this picture in your video so i hope that you enjoy drawing this silly monster and realizing that monsters aren't real but this one is so have a great time, enjoy this project, and I cannot wait to do some more art with you.